My project is sustainable textile manufacture or bicycle powered loom. Mechanical looms in design are actually really, really similar to hand looms. There's three main motions. There's the, um, so I think, yeah, so the, these are right here. These are called the warp yarns. And the ones that go across to the weft. So the first motion is raising and lowering these yarns. And um, that's why you have these two things. These are called heddles, and they have um, heeled frames, actually, and the little things inside are heddles. And the yarns go, one will go through this one, one will go through this one, one will go through this one, one will go through this one. So that as these raise and lower, it raises and lowers every other string, and it creates a space in between them. Um, right now I haven't hooked up to the bicycle. It's not easier to use if I don't. But anyway, so yeah, you can see these raising and lowering. It creates this little space for the yarn to be passed through. The second motion is um, sending the, the weft yarn, I remember it because it goes from weft to white, through the space. <laughs> and what does that is called um, a shuttle. And the shuttle, well I think I should explain shuttles probably. Right here I have three shuttles. This is a shuttle for a traditional hand loom. And what you do with this is you pass it from side to side with your hands. So you would pass it, pedal, pass it, pedal, <coughs> pass it, pedal. Um, I think I'll pass this around. And then what you have here are two um, shuttles that I made for the mechanical loom. This one, it was sort of a first attempt um, using a lot closer to that design. It has a little spool inside that you'd fill a thread, and it would spin as you go across. Um, I don't... So I'm supposed to not get too much into the design, because I could talk forever. <laughs> but this just... In passing it across, this just spins too fast. It doesn't work super well. So I made the second one, um, which works much better. And the yarn on this one is drawn directly off of this, so it's a much more continuous operation, and it's fed through this little head thing. I don't have... Um, oh yeah, also I probably should explain, this is the equipment that we have for making the first two steps of processing wool. That's another thing that I can talk about um, for a long time, but I will not right now. <laughs> if you have questions, definitely come up and ask me later. But anyway, this is something that I spun. It's not super good, but it is. Um, it can demonstrate just how this feeding mechanism works. You just go through here, pull it to the side, and then there's a little U-turn inside, so you can just pull it through. But it'll pass straight through this to the other side, and then you'll, um, you'll, um, these things will go down, and, let's see, and it'll trap the yarn in between them. So with each successive raising and lowering, the newly laid string is trapped, and then it's ready for another one. So there's a lot of different solutions. Um, the one that I'm using right now, is sort of this, what I call a shuttle hammer. And that sort of just sends it across um, the subtle arrangement here. <laughs> <laughs> so these things you depress. I didn't press it hard enough there. But anyway, um, yeah, those things you depress and it sends it right across. There's a couple different ways. I think, as I said, um, all the big production models now use jets of air or water to send it flying across. One actually has like a whole lot of shuttles, and they use it like it's like a projectile system. Like it'll shoot one across, and then it'll be carried to the side, and it'll just keep shooting one after another across. There's some really bizarre designs out there. But anyway, I'm using a fairly simple, just, um, yeah. So this is the um, one bit that it really differs substantially from hand loom. The other two motions, this and this, are really easy to make just with pistons. You can see um, right here. So one operation that isn't mechanized is the, um, the changing of the spool. That'll have to be done periodically. There's this little thing that comes out. Um, you'll, I'd have, I'm going to make like several of these, probably like 10 or so, and you can just have a basket of them pre-wound. And for winding, I think there's a whole bunch of ways you can do that. I think some people make an attachment for like an egg beater to just wind them real quickly. So the one, the one thing that the person will have to do, aside from pedaling, is change these. This will have to be done, I think, every like two or three minutes. But other than that, yeah, mechanized. Um, also, yeah, bicycle power, big thing. I know bicycle power gets like, often when anything's bicycle powered, bicycle power is like the big word around it, but honestly, bicycle power is the easiest part of this. <laughs> Anything, I mean, bicycle power is just, in an application like this, where you just have a really small machine that you're okay with just using um, manpower, Bicycle power just is the only way that makes sense. Um, it would be a pain to hook up a motor. We don't really have like water near here, running water. So yeah, bicycle power, big deal. This goes to bicycle.